Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's Lockdown Lookup. We're in a series where we're looking at the armor of God. Now, I want you to think about this scene with me, a scene that you've probably seen in a movie somewhere. But there's this playground bully, and every day he makes it kind of his mission at school to pick on this one boy. So picture the, the bully walking towards this boy during break time. And he goes up to this kid and he says, hey, loser, give me your lunch money. And in an instant before the bully knows what's happened, this little boy remembers what his dad told him, that the best form of defense is attack. And so the next thing, he punches the bully straight between the eyes and the bully runs away. Now, the same applies in our uh, spiritual lives, in our struggle against Satan and the enemy forces. The best form of defense is attack. You see, we have this mindset uh, that actually as Christians, we're victims. You know, we, we just got to wait for uh, Satan, the bully, to come along and torment us, oppress us, sow lies and doubts in our minds. And, and we think we've just got to kind of uh, just take it on the chin. But actually, Paul doesn't think that that's biblical. Now, last week, Tuesday, or sorry, rather this last Tuesday, Apostle Justin spoke about how um, a lot of our armor is defensive armor. But we actually mustn't miss the fact that some of the armor mentioned is armor used for attack. You see, in Paul's mind, we're actually meant to be on the offensive in our fight against Satan. I want you to have a look at what he says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, I want you to think about a sword for, for an instant here. A sword is a really powerful, deadly weapon. I mean, a strong, sharp sword can literally cut through flesh and bone, and sometimes even through armor. Well, Paul is telling us that we have a weapon. We have a sword as Christians. And it is a sword that is sharper than any double-edged sword. And in fact... It is a sword that can do real damage to Satan and his demons. And that sword is the word of God. Your Bibles are full of the words of God. And sometimes we just page through the scriptures and we take for granted the power of the words that are written on those pages. I want you to think about these examples in Scripture with me, to think about the power of the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of of the heart. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness. Or Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 and God said, let there be light and there was light. You see, when God speaks, things happen. The words of God are powerful. But you may be saying this morning, well, Dave, how does the word of God help me in my fight against Satan? Well, a couple of weeks ago, I did a devotion, did a devotion on self-control. And, and I pointed us to a passage in Luke chapter 4 where Jesus was in the wilderness and where three times Jesus was tempted by Satan, attacked by Satan. And I want us to go back there and think about how Jesus responded to those temptations. 
How did he respond to those spiritual attacks? Have a look at what Luke chapter 4 says. I'm reading from verse 3. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. You see, Jesus responded with the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. He spoke the words of his Father in defense against Satan's attacks. Three times Satan tempted him, and three times Jesus responded with truth from Scripture. And what was the end result? Well, the text tells us that the devil left him and waited for an opportune time. Maybe he was thinking, ah, it's no use. I can't get through to Jesus. No matter what I throw at him, he just keeps coming back with truth from God's word. I'll wait until I can get him later. Actually, I think what he was saying is, ow, that really hurt. The word of God has cut me. It's wounded me. I've got to get out of here. I've got to go and kind of let my wounds heal before I come back for another attack. So when the devil comes to you, when he comes to you with doubts that he puts in your mind, when he tells you lies, when he tempts you, you don't have to be like that victim, bullied by the school bully. You don't have to just sit back and be a sitting duck. Paul tells us that God has given us a very, very powerful weapon. We must use it. You can say to Satan in the face of those doubts, in the face of those lies, in the face of those temptations, no devil, I don't submit to your authority. I don't listen to you. Because my God says you're the father of lies. I listen only to what my heavenly father says. When he comes at you and tells you that you, you're useless or that you're not good enough or that you're guilty, you can turn around and you can slash him with the sword of the word of God and say, no, Satan. You see, my God tells me in the scriptures that there's no more condemnation for me. My God tells me that he's for me and that no one can actually bring a charge against me. So I want to encourage you this morning. Don't sit back. Don't just let Satan attack you and tempt you. Don't feel as though you're powerless because you have the Holy Spirit in you and you have the word of God. Dive into the truth of God's word. Memorize the promises. Use them in the face of those spiritual attacks. And James says that when we resist the devil, he will flee from us with his tail between his legs. We indeed are more than conquerors. Stand strong, Christian. Fight back with the word of God. God bless you today.